Hey guys, this is AC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is the calibration of a digital manifold gauge set, and in this case it's the Fieldpiece SMAN 460, and this one right here, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to calibrate the temperature sensors right here and here, and you're going to end up calibrating the zero atmospheric pressure, and as well you're going to calibrate the test pressure. So the test pressure has to do with the saturated temperature of the refrigerant that you're checking on the uh, manifold gauge set. So in our case, what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be calibrating the R410A refrigerant. And uh, there is 45 different refrigerants uh, that could be used in this with the correlating saturated temperatures. So whatever ones you're using, I would just recommend that you just test uh, with the calibration uh, function right here just to make sure that your saturation temperature is in line. And that will also include your pressures and your temperatures. The first thing that we're going to start with is temperature. And you see we have each of these clamps, we have a bucket of ice, and it's at 32 degrees. And here I have a ST4, field piece ST4. And you see that it's 32 degrees. And we're testing on T1. Let's switch over to T2. And it says 32 degrees. So that is with these small bead type uh, temp sensors. If you see on here, you see that I have T2 right here, and I have T1. Well, you're going to do the same thing with your digital manifold gauge set. You want to label them because what this is doing is this uh, set right here is reading the resistance value in the wires while this is, say in this case, submerged at 32 degree water. So this is half ice, half water. We're going to submerge this down in there, and it's going to read the resistance value. So I have this labeled as L for liquid. So this is the LLT, liquid line temperature. And the calibration for it is located right here. We're going to be using this little eighth inch screwdriver to make sure that we have these temperatures calibrated correctly. So we're just going to go ahead and turn it on. And right here it says R410A refrigerant. And if you go up, you can go to whatever other refrigerants you want, R22. We can go this way. We're just going to stick with R410A refrigerant. So that's the one we left off with last. So that's the first one that will appear on here. So you don't have to go scan through every time when you use it. And you see your liquid line temperature right here. It's reading 59.1 degrees. Now this is a big deal. I would highly, highly recommend that you uh, use a large bucket. And in fact, uh, I'd be happy with a thermos or something like that. Something that insulates a little bit. And you have the ice in there and you have this in the middle. Right now, you have heat being absorbed by the ice water from the side. So I don't want to keep it, uh, I want to keep it away from the sides. I want to have it right down there in the middle. So presently, I'm reading 29.3 for my liquid line temperature. And I want that to stabilize. You see these uh, K-type temp sensors with the bead on the, on the front right here? These are able to change temperature very rapidly. Versus on the clamp, it takes a little bit longer because it has a plate attached to it. So now that it's basically consistent, it's been about 29.6 or so. Uh, we're going to go ahead and adjust this. It's clockwise to increase the temperature. So we're going to turn it clockwise, and it should be at 32 degrees. So once again, do not use a small bowl for this or anything like that. Make sure you use a large container. This right here is a gallon size container filled with ice. So right there, we're at 32 degrees. We're going to see if it, if it moves at all from there. And if it does, we'll adjust it again. But it looks like it's pretty stable there. Okay. So now we're looking at our suction line temperature. So we are right there and we are fairly close, but we're going to give it a little bit of time just to absorb uh, the temperature there.
So whether you get this out of the box new, uh, you, you need to do that, or just say it's been a little bit of time, you want to make sure that you recalibrate the temperature clamps because it, when it's reading the resistance value in this, what if it got tugged or something like that and the resistance value changed? You can. The nice thing about it is you can recalibrate it with these uh, two little adjusters right there. So now it's pretty consistent, 33.7. And we are going to go counterclockwise down to 32 degrees. So that's the one that's moving. Thirty-two point one. I mean really we want about at least half a degree or better. We want to get as specific as possible. So I mean really, you know, 0 0.1, 0 0.2 degrees within the actual temperature, that's, that's really what we're looking for. And you need to get these things set anyway in order to do your, your test pressure for your saturated uh, temperature of the refrigerant. So we'll give it one more little adjustment and that'll be it. Okay, so it's 32 degrees. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our hose off right here. You read pressure up at the top. So this is the high side. This is the low side. So up at the top you see we have 0.0, .0 PSIG and 0.0, .0 PSIG. That's because this has already been calibrated before. But just for instance, all we would do is just do that. Um, you want to make sure that you have these open and your refrigeration knob open. So, so that way you have... Uh, correct flow going through, everything is at zero, and you're good to go and you just press the button. So now you're calibrated for atmospheric pressure. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to calibrate for the saturated temperature of our 410A refrigerant. So we're going to use two caps. We're going to put the caps down here. So if you see that. And once again, we're going to leave these open and this one open. So just so you know, what I did is I dried these temp clamps off and I let it absorb the temperature in the room. It took quite a bit of time, uh, just so you know, but it is now 0.2 to 0.3 degrees off from each other. It says 70.2 on the liquid line temperature and 70.4 on the suction line temperature. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to make sure that you have your uh, refrigerant valve open. This can stay shut. You're going to have your low side open and your high side. So what that's going to do is you connect from here to the high side and from here to the low side. So if we had the refrigerant coming in the low side, it's going to connect to both ports right here. And we're going to be checking with the suction line temperature uh, right here. So we're going to connect into our tank. And we're going to check the saturated temperature reading of this r 4 a refrigerant bottle. We're going to wait and just let these uh, pressure stabilize right here, especially also since we took vapor from inside the bottle, so the pressure lowered in the bottle. So we're going to let all that stabilize for a second. And just to give you a for instance, right now it's 201.4 PSIG. So this manifold gauge set is saying that it should read 70.1 as a saturated temperature on the refrigerant bottle. Right now, that suction line temperature clamp sitting right here is only 0.1 degree away from that. So that's going to be good. All right. So what we're going to do is we can take our clamp. Now, in the manual, it says that you should take a uh, bead type uh, temp sensor and tape it to the bottle. But we just got done calibrating these temp sensors. So we just want to make sure it's near the bottle. I would not be doing this in a room where you have air conditioning running or something like that because that could end up lowering the temperature of the bottle. So right now, it's actually reading 70.3. We're going to calibrate it. And it says good. Okay. So that, that temp sensor is good. So just so you know, you see how it says negative right here, OL. So what that means is that it might be 0.1 off from the temperature. So this is reading 
super heat. And it may even be just by my breath, basically, that I'm, I'm breathing on this clamp right now and, and I'm putting heat on this. But uh, you see it's very, very close. So you don't have to uh, tape a bead type temp sensor because you would have to calibrate that temp sensor. So as long as this is in the same room uh, at a steady temperature and you don't have air conditioning on or, or heat on and it's rising or lowering the temperature in the room, as long as it's close, it should calibrate, uh, calibrate as good. Okay, so you see that there's a varying temperature because I had my hand up by this clamp. So I'm gonna move that back down. So just so you know, I've included links to all the tools used in this video down in the description below. And if you wanted to help support this HVACR training channel, check out patreon.com slash acservicetech, where we're rewarding the members uh, for supporting the channel through extra content there. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.